My Magical Story Collection A Disney Book, Moana Read by Books for Kids by Flying Dragons In the beginning, there was only ocean until the mother island, Tefiti, emerged. Her heart had the power to create life itself and she shared it with the world. But in time, some began to want Tefiti's heart for themselves. And one day, the most brazen of them all voyaged across the vast ocean to take it. He was a demigod of the wind and sea, a shapeshifter, a trickster, a warrior who wielded a, might, wielded a mighty magical fish hook, and his name was Maui. In the village of Motunui, a group of small children gathered around Grandma Tala, listening to her tale. The children were all worried by the story, except Moana, the daughter of Chief Tui. Grandma Tala continued, Without her heart, Tefiti gave birth to a terrible darkness. Teka, a demon of earth and fire, struck Maui from the sky. Maui, his magical fish hook, and the heart of Tefiti have never been seen since. Grandma went on, But one day the heart will be found by someone who will journey beyond our reef, find Maui, deliver him across the great ocean to restore Tefiti's heart and save us all. Later, Moana ran to her favourite place, the beach. She saw a baby turtle being attacked by seabirds and hurried to help it reach the water's edge. Suddenly, the ocean waves beckoned Moana. She stepped forward, following the water away from the shore. She noticed a small stone with a strange spiral pattern on it and went to pick it up just as her father called her name. Moana! The ocean quickly whisked Moana back to the sandy shore. As she landed, the stone fell from her hand. Years passed as Moana grew into a teenager. Her father prepared her for the time when she would become chief. One day, he asked her to lead a council meeting. Moana was surprised to learn that the village's crops were dying and there were no more fish in the lagoon. Moana wanted to help her people. Chief Tui had forbidden anyone from going beyond the reef, but, but Moana thought perhaps they would find fish out in the open sea. Tui grew angry at Moana's suggestion. No one goes beyond the reef, he said firmly. Moana didn't want to disobey her father, but she knew in her heart their best chance was to go past the reef. There's more fish beyond the reef, she said to herself. Grabbing a boat and an oar, Moana set sail. She had not gone far when a large wave knocked into her boat, destroying it. When Moana was washed ashore, Grandma Tala appeared. Moana told Grandma that her father was right. She wasn't meant to venture beyond the reef. With a mysterious smile, Grandma Tala led Moana to a hidden cave. She handed Moana a torch. Who are you meant to be? Go inside, bang the drum and find out. Moana entered the cave and found out that her people were once again voyagers. Why do we stop? She asked Grandma Tala. Grandma Tala explained that the ships had stopped coming back when Maui stole the heart of Tefiti. To protect their people, the ancient chiefs have forbidden any more voyagers. Grandma Tala gently part pressed the heart of Tefiti into Moana's hand. It was the stone the ocean had given Moana all those years before. Grandma Tala smiled. The ocean chose you. Moana raced back to the village and burst into the council meeting. We can save our island. We were voyagers. We can voyage again. Chief Tui was mad. He wished Moana would forget about the ocean. Just then, a messenger brought terrible news. Grandma Tala was ill. Moana hurried to her side. Grandma Tala urged her to find Maui. Follow the fish hook. And when you find Maui, you grab him by the ear and you say, I am Moana of Motunui. You will board my boat, sail across the sea and restore the heart of Tefiti. Moana knew Grandma Tala was right. She took a boat from the cave and boldly set sail. Later that night, a violent storm hit. Rocked by the waves, Moana's boat crashed on an island. In the morning, Moana realised she had landed on Maui's island. Moana tried to give her speech, 
but Maui cut her off. He was not interested in Moana. He was focused on something else. Boat! You have a boat! He said happily. Moana tried to tell Maui that he must come with her. I'm here because you stole the heart of Tefiti, and you will board my boat, sail across the sea, and put it back. But Maui would not listen. He wanted to leave the island alone. So he trapped Moana in a cave and set sail in her boat. Moana escaped and swam toward Maui, but she couldn't catch up with him. Suddenly, the ocean lifted her onto the boat. Maui was stunned. I did not see that coming. Moana held up the heart of Tefiti. I am Moana of Motunui, and you will restore the heart. Maui backed away. That is not a heart. It is a curse. Moana knew that she needed Maui's help to reach Tefiti and restore the heart. But Maui needed her help too. Without his hook, he didn't have any magic. Moana offered him a trade. We get your hook, take out Teka, restore the heart. Deal? Eventually, the demigod agreed. <sighs> Deal. But getting the fish hook wouldn't be easy. It was being held by Tomatoa, a giant crab who collected shiny objects. Tamatoa lived in Lalotai, the realm of monsters. Maui and Moana climbed up a tall, jagged rock and then jumped down, down, down through a deep portal in the ocean to Lalotai. Moana rushed into Tamatoa's cave, only to be captured by the monster. To her surprise, Maui came to Moana's rescue and grabbed his hook. But when he tried to shapeshift and fly away, he couldn't. His hook wasn't working. He kept turning into the wrong animal. As Tamatoa closed in on Maui, Moana held up the heart of Tefiti. Then she dropped it to the ground. When Tamatoa lunged for it, Moana grabbed the fish hook. Tamatoa thought he got the heart, but Moana had tricked him. Tamatoa was left with a rock. Moana still had the heart. Moana had kept her part of the deal. Now it was Maui's turn. Maui taught Moana how to sail and navigate by the stars. As they approached the island of Defiti, smoke billowed into the sky. It was Teka, the lava monster. With Moana's encouragement, Maui felt confident that he could defeat Teka. It's Maui time, Maui yelled as he transformed into a hawk and flew toward the islands around Tefiti. Suddenly, Teka rose up and knocked Maui out of the sky. Moana caught Maui in her boat. Maui told Moana to turn around. They weren't ready to face Teka, but Moana kept going. Teka brought his giant fist down toward their boat. At the last second, Maui raised his fish hook and blocked the blow. The impact created a tidal wave that carried Moana and Maui out into the ocean, far from Tefiti. Then Moana realized something. The monster was made of hot lava. It could not touch the cool ocean water. If Moana could distract Teka with the water, maybe she could sneak past it. Moana turned to Maui for help, but he refused. His fish hook had been damaged. One more hit and it would be destroyed. Without my hook, I am nothing. Goodbye, Moana, Maui said as he flew away. All alone, Moana dropped the heart of Tefiti back into the ocean. You have to choose somewhere else, she said. Moana watched sadly as the heart sank. Suddenly, a glowing manta ray rushed through the water toward her. A voice came from the bow of the boat. You're a long ways past the reef. It was Grandma Tala. She told Moana that she'd been wrong to pressure her. I never should have put so much on your shoulders. If you're ready to go home, I will be with you. Moana no longer knew what was the right thing to do. Listening, she tried to find her inner voice again. Finally, the answer came to her. She was Moana. She loved her people in the sea. She was a wayfinder. Moana dove into the dark water. Far below on the ocean floor, the heart of Tefiti began to glow. Moana swam to it and grabbed the heart once more. Moana was determined to face Teka with or without Ma Maui's help. Moana steered her boat toward a narrow gap in the barrier islands. 
Teka rose to stop her, but Moana made it through. Teka went after Moana and prepared to smash the boats to bits. At that second, Maui returned to help Moana. The demigod blocked Teka's blow with his cracked fish hook. I've got your back, chosen one. Go save the world. With Maui holding Teka at bay, Moana reached to Fiti. She raced up a slope and stopped short. Where, sh where Te Fiti should have been was an empty crater. At that moment, Maui flew toward Te Ka, but was knocked to the ground, shattering his hook. As Moana stared at Te Ka, she caught a, caught a glimpse of a familiar spiral in its chest. Suddenly, Moana knew exactly what to do. She held up the heart, instructing the water to let her through. Te Ka ran towards her, but Moana stood tall. As the monster reached her, Moana touched her forehead to Te Ka's and told it to remember who it was. With that, Te Ka's rocky exterior fell away. Inside was a kind, smiling face. It was Te Fiti. Moana returned her heart and Te Fiti transformed back into her true self. Te Fiti thanked Moana and Maui. She repaired Moana's canoe and restored Maui's shattered fish hook. As Maui prepared to leave, Moana had a suggestion. You could come with me, you know. My people are going to need a master wayfinder. Maui gave Moana a hug. They already have one. He transformed into a giant hawk and flew towards the horizon. On Motunui, Moana's mother and father noticed the land turning green again. Together they raced down to the water's edge. A moment later, the shadow of Moana's boat emerged from the horizon line. She was home. With Tafiti restored, everything on Motunui began to bloom again. The villagers pulled the ancient boats out from the cave. The time for voyaging had returned. It was time for Moana to lead her people on new adventures across the sea. The end. If you enjoyed this book, please do hit subscribe. We've got lots more Disney and lots of other books we'd love to share with you as well. This one? Mm-hmm.